So tell me why this week's episode of Legend of Korra was actually leaked online a day early from the actual release date of the episode. Because I, I don't understand. that, that That's not cool. I decided to actually wait. That's why this review is coming out today instead of yesterday. Because I decided to wait for the actual release date of the episode on Nick. Because I want to support the series and actually give an impression and so it can make some money. So that the, the series honestly can maybe still continue on even after The Legend of Korra is done. I, I want to continue to support because I'm a fan of this series. I don't want to go on another site and just, and just watch it because I'm not, I'm not helping them otherwise. So please, if you can, if you you should watch the episode on Nick. Or if not, go on Mr. Trippin and just at least open it up and give it an impression. I mean, we need to support this series. If, it, if we're not supporting it, then who is? So, I mean, that is what it is. I just wanted to say that. Here is my review for Legend of Korra Season 3, Episode 10, titled Long Live the Queen. I freaking love this title name for this episode here because it's, it's just so ironic. It's just so ironic. I love it. I just, I just love it. It's funny. Also, no summarization will be needed for this week's episode. I'm just going to talk about the things that need to be said. Like, the first thing I need to talk about is... Why were there only four people on the ship that's taking Asami and Korra to Ba Sing Se? That didn't make sense. Not to mention, they seem to just be non-benders. So, see how urgent this was for the Queen to get Korra back to her and everything. You would think she would make sure to have some guards there to guard them and this is the avatar and not to mention apparently the ship was all freaking bootleg because the cabbage court don't know how to make freaking airships so it's like it seemed to me this whole thing to, to take Korra and Asami over there was destined to fail it was destined to fail that crap had a had like a 10% chance of actually succeeding so I, I don't know honestly that, that right there kind of kind of bugged me a little bit because I, I don't understand why it was set up that way. Maybe the only reason maybe why they wanted to set it up that way because they wanted to show that, you know, with Korra working with these regular people, they, they can change their minds about how Korra I mean about how they feel about Korra and everything like that. Maybe that's what it is. I, I, I don't I don't even know. Like I said, that was just to me kinda odd. But besides that, that's the only issue I actually had, because otherwise this was this is a pretty good episode. So another thing I need to talk about here is Bolin. He just can't metal bend. He just can't do it. So seeing how much he's struggling with it, I'm just gonna assume that he's not gonna probably learn it at this point. I mean, he needs a proper teacher to honestly really teach him how to metal bend. He don't know how to do the form, nothing. He just swings and he hopes to actually move the metal. That's not how it works. So, I don't know. With the way things are, I don't think he's gonna end up learning metal bending. Lava bending does seem to be the hot new topic. You know, get it? Hot. Lava. Lava. Hot. Ah! But no, he, it seems like, you know, everybody's saying this, and I'm, I'm going to say this at this point. He might end up learning like Lava Bending or something, because he needs something special anyways, or himself. And, yeah, so, you know, Lava Bending is, is that thing, and once maybe he runs into that guy again, that Lava Bending master there, that guy's a beast, what he did in this episode, like, seriously. But that guy right there, he, maybe once they run into each other again, he might end up learning how to do it or something, because, hey, I'm bowling. He has to get something here. It's cool to see the sand sailors here again because they needed some kind of transportation to get out of the desert. And so they created or they made a sand sailors to get out of there and everything. To get away from this big gigantic fish, by the way, too. I was just trying to eat them the whole time. I don't know what that was up with that thing. I guess there's sand fishes in there now. Like in the desert, you just just, just ready to eat all day. Like I, I don't even understand how the heck that can live in the desert like that. But I'll leave that alone. But um, no, it's just really nice to see that. You know, there's work on the nostalgia factor yet again. But I love it. I love it. Alright, so let's talk about the big things that actually happened in this episode. So here, this dude killed the Earth Queen by suffocation. He by using air bending. He took the oxygen from her lungs and just suffocated her. That was beast. I I I, I, I can't I can't believe that actually happened. Like to see that she was a full on death. We saw her live, and then the moment right there we see we're see, we're seeing her die and she's just collapsing and she's done. That was this was pretty gruesome, honestly. You know. Only death that scene that was pretty on, like pretty bad on this scale was probably that that suicide that Amon and his brother did because that was just freaking ridiculous that was a suicide and just you know boom dead I'm like god dang so I mean but we got to see her actually die here and that was like whoa you know they, like, this show this show don't give a crap you know yeah <laughs> sure don't give a crap but it's nice to see this ability we all thought that uh, airbenders could do something like this and actually see it happening it, it's 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 great to see honestly it, it's great to see. <laughs> Alright, so let me talk about the other big thing that actually happened in this episode. And it makes sense exactly how he did this, but the Lava Bender. He takes down part of the wall of Ba Sing Se. 
Yes. He took down part of the wall of Ba Sing Se by himself. That dude's beast. Now, the thing is, it makes perfect sense how he can do something like this. Because, I mean, if you really think about it, really any Earthbender has a better chance of actually taking down the wall of Ba Sing Se as opposed to any other nation because, you know, the, the wall is made of Earth. So, I mean, it it work if Urban was actually trying to go in there and, and try to take it down. But he's on a, a much greater scale and, and just much stronger than any Earthbender there is, you know? He's a lava bender. So to see him do something like this isn't, isn't, I mean, it's, it's surprising, but it, should, it shouldn't shock you to a point to be like, man, this doesn't make any sense. Like, how can you not, how can he do that? No, he because he can do something like that. This is what makes him special. This is why he's so powerful. This is why Zuko said what he said. He wasn't kidding. So this dude, that, that was impressive. What, what he did here, that was very impressive. And like I said, I mean, Bolin, get that ability, man. Look, look, look what he just did. Look what he just did. That was that was good. That was good. I, again, come on. Oh, God dang. <laughs> so last thing I want to talk about is that Boston C is thrown into chaos, and we're going to see a glimpse of the world that the Red Lotus is once. So pay attention, guys, here. See, this is going to be the world that they want to create. That this this so-called freedom, you know, freedom is disorder. This is what they want. So all when you see all this disorder, it's already people looting and everything. It's already happening stupid. People are just like, oh okay, let's go and steal things. Like, yeah, this is that's what they're gonna do. So we'll see how this is gonna go. I mean, this is what the freedom is what they're talking about. So I'm curious to how this is all gonna come to come about. And let's see if people are truly free and so on and so forth. So I look I look forward to seeing what Boston say is going to look like when uh, Cora actually gets there because she's not there yet. So, you know, he, she ends up hearing about this on the radio when she's with Z uh, Lord Zuko, uh, Todd Rock, and Lynn. So, yeah, this this shall be very interesting to see. So, yeah, again, this was a really good episode this week for The Legend of Korra. Leave your comments below and tell me what you think of this week's episode. Like, like this review, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see some more Legend of Korra reviews from me. See you guys in the Breakmaster, and until then, people, break out.